this is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting broadcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and I hope you're having an awesome day today. And I know if you're like me, I've been getting ready for Christmas, buying presents, and however you celebrate Christmas, I know you're in preparation this week. Preparation mode, I guess is what I would call it this week. So I hope you're actually able to sit down for a minute, clear your mind, and just maybe take a breather and listen to what I have to say today on this podcast, because I believe it's going to help set you free. You know, I was thinking the other day about um, basically learning how to avoid your abusers. And if you really think about it, folks, you know what? We take stuff so seriously in life, but the truth of the matter is there is no one in life that is exempt from abuse and rejection and abandonment or, you know, down talking or cutting someone, you know, uh, to pieces with their tongue. I mean, it's it's actually part of life, unfortunately. <laughs> it's something that we all go through, we all do, we all have done, or we have done it, you know, uh, to us. And, and so I want to talk from a place of not the um, the perfection point of view, not the Brady Bunch point of view, because truth be told, folks, unfortunately, Brady Bunch does not exist. It's There's no such thing as the Brady Bunch happy ending. But yet, in Christ, we know we have a happy ending. We, in Christ, we know that God turns things around for our good and for His glory. But I wanted to focus on today's things that a lot of us have been through. And you know what? You might be in that situation right now. I remember talking to a wonderful a wonderful lady the other day in life coaching who actually is going through the same exact situation of something I want to talk about. In fact, sort of, she's sort of my inspiration today because one of the things she talked about is what do I do with my family? You know, at Christmas, I have, you know, someone that just constantly puts me down and constantly does this and constantly does that. And she's, I don't know what to do about it. She says, I'm just so tired of it. And everyone else is telling me, you know, um, just make peace, you know, don't worry about it. Just put up with her. And the truth be told, folks, sometimes you just don't put up with abuse. In fact, really, if you think about it, you should never put up with abuse. And no one should ever ask you to put up with abuse. Because here's the truth of the matter, folks. You know your heart more than anyone. And sometimes there are good-hearted people who really feel as if they're trying to make peace, who would ask you, hey, you know what? Just put up with it. Just tolerate her. Just tolerate him just to get us through the holidays, to get us through this marriage, to get us through this you know, relationship. Get us through, you know, the situation on your job. Folks, let me tell you something. When you learn to honor yourself and love who you are, love who you are knowing that God has wonderfully and fearfully created you, then you will come to that place in life to realize, you know what? I'm not better than anyone else. And I'm not perfect by far. I've made my mistakes and will continue to make my mistakes. But yet you realize, I have to protect my heart. I have to protect my heart. And so many of you I've talked to throughout the years, sometimes you feel feel as if, well, protecting my heart and yet still staying in the abusive system of that person or those people is maybe just what I have to do. Folks, you don't have to do that. God would never ask you to be slayed or to put up with someone who's constantly attacking you, cutting you down or putting you down. There is no such thing in the scriptures whatsoever that where God says, just put up with it. Let me give you a great example. And I thought about this last night that really hit home with me, thinking, you know what, this is where a lot of us in life are. And maybe you've been there, maybe you might be placed there one day. And that is, could you imagine an abusive husband who is constantly putting his wife down, cutting her to the core, draining her financially, putting her in a place where she's not pretty, putting her in her place, always putting her in a place where, you know, there are always is better looking women out there for me. Or maybe he puts her, puts her in that place of of having to beat up on her, uh, you know, or puts her in that place where you know I, I will I will train you to be what I want you to be. And let's say, for example, that abusive husband does the same thing to the children. And let's say that wife, because she comes from a victim mentality. And folks, if truth be told, every one of us to some degree have a victim mentality. It's not the fact that we're so set free we become perfect. But yet, on the other hand, though, when someone has an abuse victim mentality, what happens is they will turn around and tell their own children, hey, just 
just put up with it so we can have peace in the family. Just put up with it so, so dad won't get mad. Just, just don't worry about it. You know, I, we don't want to infuriate dad. And folks, let me ask you an honest question. First and foremost, is that what your heavenly father who died to set you free would want for you? No. A true mother who loves her children would say, look, even at the cost of my own unhappiness, I'll do whatever it takes for you to be happy. Get out of the house now and never look back. And I've talked to people before whose parents told them that. And they've said, you know what? For a long time, I was so mad at my mother. I was so mad at my mother because of the fact, in fact, I spoke to a woman not too long ago. I was so mad at my mother who, who told me to, to get out and never look back, but I was too young to understand that she was my salvation. She was trying to protect me. She was trying to say, look, I got myself in this situation, but you don't have to be here. You can leave from this abusiveness. You can be set free. And at the, at the cost and the risk of my own happiness, I'll set you free. And it took me a while to break through to that lady to let her know that's what true love does. Even at the expense of your own happiness, true love would always put others first to say, I don't know what you've been through. Or maybe I have known what you've been through. Maybe I'm going through it myself. Or maybe I understand the consequences that if you stay, you will constantly be continue to be beaten down, drained financially, put down, never celebrated, but always tolerated. And a true person who understands that concept, and you know who understands that concept the Lord showed me more than anyone? is that of the Father. The Father put His Son on the cross. And can you imagine Jesus saying, even at my own expense, I'll take the beating just for you to be free. I'll take the beating in order for you to experience joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And it's not the fact we always want someone to be that the place where they're miserable or you take the heat from me. But truth be told, folks, I've realized in my life that you know what? You yourself, you might be that mother. You might be that person. But let me tell you something. Joy comes in the morning. And the one thing in life that I have come to the conclusion on, no one, including the mother, no one, including the daughter, no one, including the father or the, da- or, or the, or the son, no one should ever be subject to have to put up with, tolerate, and be drained because you want peace. You know, one thing I was praying about this morning, I said, Lord, what can I say in my podcast that would really be empowering? What can I say that would really help set others free of something maybe I've learned or maybe I'm still learning in my own life? And one thing God told me that was amazing. He says, Jeremy, he said, son, he said, a dog never returns to its vomit. And I thought about that for a moment. When you are at a place in your life where you know someone does not celebrate you but tolerate you, and you know someone is just putting up with you, and you know that someone has drained you financially, and you've made sacrifice after sacrifice you've done for them, you have, you know, you, you've even gone the extra mile taking someone to another state to, to get, to get benefits or health or, or, or a job or whatever it is that you've done, you've gone the extra mile, and they constantly, continuously turn around and just do that to you. Folks, if you are that person that returns the vomit, I won't call you a fool, but I will tell you this, you're being foolish. Because anyone knows you never return back to the abuser. You never return back to someone. And the Bible makes it plain even when, and I I love how God showed this to me. The Bible makes it plain even for the ten that left and the one that returned back to said, thank you, Master, for healing me. And he says, what? You know what? You're now whole. I mean, Jesus made it plain because really you returned to me and thanked me for what I've done for you. And you returned to me to say, you know what? It's not even the fact that you have to give me praise. It's a fact that your heart says it is so appreciative and your heart is says thank you. That was true love that you displayed for me and you and your money that you gave me, that was love. And you're and, and you taking that time out of your busy schedule to do this for me, travel to another state, do this, do that. That was agape. That was true love. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've done for me. And you know what happened? Praise God, he made that guy whole. And the other nine never returned back to say, thank you, thank you. Because a lot of people don't have thankful hearts. A lot of people are not appreciative. A lot of people really don't know the power of thanksgiving and thankfulness. And when you learn that, you understand that that will make you whole. 
But when you constantly have someone who is abusing, 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 abusing you, and once again, folks, there is power in toleration and there is power in celebration. And both have a, 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 a an opposite effect. When you are being celebrated and someone says, I love you for who you are, I celebrate you because of the amazing person you are. There's a, a, a powerful energetic force of energy, positive energy that goes forth. You can call it anointing or whatever, but it goes forth into that person and they can feel, they can sense, they can know that power that is within inside of what you're displaying and it brings wholeness and healing to that person to say, I'm in a safe place. I'm in a place of love. I'm in a place where your peace has truly made me feel whole. And this morning when I was thinking about all this stuff, oh, by the way, let's talk about this as well. And then toleration, toleration. And you might say to yourself, well, so-and-so loves me, but I know they're tolerating me. Folks, love never tolerates. Love embraces. Love celebrates. Love says, I welcome every fiber of who you are. That's what, that's what, that's what celebration does. Toleration will always push forth a negative energy, a negative vibration to you that, that will lower your own vibration because you know in your heart of hearts, in the spirit of who you really are, having a human experience, you know, I am only with you because you tolerate me. And folks, let me tell you something. This morning I woke up and I had so many things in my mind and I was like, Lord, what I talk about today in the podcast, Lord, what can I do to, you know, tell me some things today that I know I can, you know, say prophetically to people, you know, you talk to me, God, today. And I remember when I did, God began to speak to me some powerful things. And I began to realize two things. And that is one, even within the parable of the scriptures where the king invited all his family and friends to the, to the party and the celebration and none of them wanted to come. You know what I call that? That's called toleration. That's called non-appreciation. That's called not being thankful for what the king has done for you. And it doesn't make the king any better. It just says, you know what? You know in which you're in that vibration of God that you just can't help but celebrate someone by saying thank you and you're appreciative. And so what did the king do? I love this with a passion. The king made a paradigm shift and said, you know what? I want to spend time with those who tolerate me. I'm not going to spend time with those who don't appreciate me, who don't honor me, who don't really understand that I love them. That's why at first I invited the family and friends. But you know what happens? You know what he did? He shifted his entire life to say, I'm not going to create my own pain. I'm not going to create my own rejection by saying, you're going to reject me and have that manifest in my reality. No way, Jose. It's not part of my existence either. I won't allow that. And so what did the king do? He says, I'm not going to create pain. I'm going to create a, the dawning of a new day to come into my world. I love this, how God showed me. that He says, I'm going to create for my world a day where people who will celebrate me, appreciate me, and truly be thankful that I've invited them to the party, those are who I will, I will spend time with. So what did he do? He shifted his life, not creating out of, not creating out of pain and say, woe is me, my life is not perfect, I just want this day to be wonderful by the expense of other people's pain. So what he did is he shifted it and he said, you know what, I'm going to celebrate this day and celebrate a creativeness by inviting the outsiders. Those people will be appreciative. Those people are not spoiled. Those people are not, you know, um, hard-hearted to what I have and what I've done and who I want to be to them. They're not that way. They really appreciate the very smallest to the largest. So he invited the outsiders to come. And you know what, folks? That king had a blast. He had a party. See, you have to remember, folks, you create your own pain. Now, a lot of times people say, oh, my God, that's so harsh, Jeremy. You know, here's what I'd say. Put up, you know, grow up and put away childish things. Put on your, 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 you know, shod yourself, you know, with the preparation of the gospel. Get your shield of faith. Get your sword of the spirit and fight with love. Fight with love to say, hold on a minute. It's the truth. No one can hurt you and allow you allow, unless you allow the door of your heart to be opened and you 
you receive their rejection, their abandonment, and their threats. If someone threatens you and says, if you don't do this, you won't see this. You won't see me anymore. You won't see my children. You won't see... If someone threatens you that way, folks, let me tell you something. They're, they're the, probably the most anti-Christ person you want to be with. Do you want to be that dog returns to someone's vomit? And do you want to and not be respected by others? No. You want to be at a place where people are going to look at you and say, you know what, I honor you because you showed me the way. You showed me the path to know what to do and what not to do. And you taught me not to go back and eat my own vomit by returning back and saying, not a problem. I'll, I'll be enslaved by your thinking. I'll be enslaved by, by what you do because, it, you know, it's almost like Jesus and, and the woman who says, you know, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Do you want to be that dog who just eats whatever somebody throws to you? Or do you want to be around people who say, thank you so much. I want to be a part of your life. Thank you so much that you've honored me and allowed me to be here. I will be true to you. That's the people you want to be, to be friends with. That's the people you want in your life, folks. Not those who are going to put up with you. Don't create your pain. You're creating your own existence, folks. Stop it. You know, I had an amazing chance in my life. Not an amazing, but I had a chance in my life. And you know what? We've all had our chance. Every last one of us has had our opportunity and our chance to create something, to create anger, to create frustration, to create pain. We've had that opportunity. And sometimes, unfortunately, like the rest of us, we've all been there. We've all created that thing and says, Man, look, I've riled myself up. I've, I've got myself all upset over something. And you know what happens? You have to reverse that curse. You have to reverse what you've created by turning around and realizing, you know what? I created this emotion of pain, fear, anxiety, hatred, bitterness because of this person who doesn't celebrate me. Folks, don't go against the grain. If someone doesn't want to celebrate you, you know what? It's okay to walk out of their life. You know, you can still love your enemies. I love my enemies. There is someone who hurt me. Gosh, I think it was 13 years ago in ministry. Broke my heart. Really when it was out to kill me. I mean, destroy me. Literally destroy me. Even call people I was associated with. And I thought, God, what have I done? What have I done? I've checked my heart. What have I done? You know? And I realized it was actually not anything I actually did. It was a fact of pure jealousy because out of, out of stupidity, I was traveling more during the time, getting the invitations, and this person wasn't. And I thought, wow, you want to destroy me because you're jealous. And you know what? I, it took me some time. It took me some time, because I'm honest. And I, and to this very day, I, I really love him. I totally love him. And I say, you know what? Lord, I hope he's having a, a, a great life. Unfortunately, I think that from what I've been told, you know, that he divorced, his ministry went down, but I never would wish that upon anyone. And I said, you know, Lord, in my heart, it's half heart. I said, I really want the best from him. I really love him, God. And I really, if I was to see him today, I'd say, hey, man, what's up? And yet, there's a time where we never talked again, never spoke. And there's a season where I was aggravated and I was so mad. But I thought, you know what, Jeremy, you're creating this madness. He didn't make you mad. You accepted the emotion to create the madness. Stop it. And so I did, and I forgave. And you know, I've never spoken with him again. But if I ran into him one day, I would say, man, what's up? And I feel nothing in my heart, literally, but pure love for him. Because I realized, you know what, we've all been there. But it doesn't mean I had to continuously go back to my vomit and continuously put up with that because I realized in my life I had to honor my own self. I had to put strength within myself. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. That word encourage in the Hebrew means he repaired himself, put himself back together, put it in another way. He created his own joy during a situation that didn't look too joyful. He created that to say, I don't need to do this anymore to myself. I deserve better. And truth be told, folks, if you look at your life, you realize some things. When it deals with abuse, you have to understand, never, ever, 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 ever ask anyone, hey, you know what? You know, you just don't, you don't worry about it. Just go and be happy. Never ask that of anyone. Never. What you're asking someone to do, because knowing that person knows their own heart, and knowing that person really truly knows what's hurt them, and, and what is, and what has really been a, a, a victimized spirit that maybe they're walking in, when you ask that of someone, you're asking them, look, I know that vomit probably tastes bad, 
because I've never tasted it for you, but you still go ahead and, and eat of it. Because you know what? Don't you, you gotta make me happy. You gotta do what makes me happy. You have to realize in life, folks, you don't do things to make people happy at the expense of your own pain, at the expense of your own heart breaking, and the expense of your own spirit man being broken because you've seen the abuse of what that other person has done to you. Never ask that of anyone. It is totally horrible to ask that of someone. What you do is you say, you know what? I might not understand where you're coming from, and I don't want to create this for you because I love you so much, just like I love myself. So I'm not going to ask you to do something that I myself even would not even do. Are you with me? See, it's so easy, folks, to ask something from someone else to say, you just need to ask them to forgive you. You need to tell them you're sorry. You know, it's easy for someone else to tell you that. Is it not? But it's so hard for that person to do it. And a lot of times you will never even see that person do it, you know, but they'll ask that of you. And so you have to come to that conclusion in your heart of hearts to know what really hurts me the most. What has pained me, per se, of what somebody has done to me? Only you know your story, folks. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Your story, your journey, your journey, your experience truly is the only thing that testifies to you and should be to other people. You know your heart more than anyone. And when you know your heart, you have to say, I am really, really, truly so sorry, but I cannot hang out with you anymore. I truly am sorry, but I can't do what you're asking me to do. I truly am sorry, but I can't do something when I know that you something you'll never know because you're not in my heart. Know what pains me. And if you truly love me, you would never ask me to do something against my own will of something that I know makes me fragmented. Something else the Lord told me this morning that I thought was so phenomenal. I mean, you know, have you ever had that morning where you wake up and God is just like, bam, bam, bam. He's just speaking so much to you. And you're like, I didn't even ask for this, God. And God's like, but let me show you great and mighty things you know not of. Let me show you revelation beyond revelation that will help you to understand situations, understand problems, understand people. People, understand life. And so I woke up and when God, I did, God says, do you know what peace is? You know, have you ever heard someone say, just be a peacemaker, just be at peace, you know, just make peace in the family, just make peace with your boss, just make peace with this person, your neighbor. And we get that, do we not? Because we all want to make peace. But what does that mean to make peace with someone? Here's what it means. Peace is a derivative that we get from Jerusalem, which actually comes from the word shalom, which is nothing missing, nothing broken. So when someone says shalom, they're saying to you, they're prophesying a declarative type of uh, saying to say, I speak into you um, nothing missing, nothing broken. It's one of the biggest honors someone can say to you is by giving you peace. And what that means is there's nothing missing, nothing broken. So when you walk in peace, it means nothing in me is missing, nothing in me is broken. And what does that look like? It means that when you want to walk in peace, if someone around you takes away that peace and they make you fragmented and they try to, to, to take away from your wholeness and take away from something that is, that is put together in you, folks, let me tell you something. That when you say, I, you just need to make peace with them in the sense of, you just need to do what is right, and that is just make peace for the, for the family. Make peace for on your job. Make peace. What you're asking someone to do is, I know the cost of your own identity, and I know the cost of your own you know wholeness. I'm asking you to go against that and allow someone to fragment you. Allow someone to dis disrupt your wholeness. Because peace means that when I'm around you and I sense peace from the Prince of Peace, that means I feel feel more whole. I feel, I sense, and I know that nothing in my life is missing. When you're away from someone who is destructive to you, abusive to you, puts you down, drains you at, you know, at all costs, and is, is only coming around. And folks, how many of you in your life have you experienced that one person who comes around only when they need money? <laughs> have you been there? Because I know I have. When they come in your life and they all, they always just need money. They only call you when they need something from you. And you look and you're thinking, there's never give and take. It's always a take, take, take. And you feel as if you're having to, after a while, buy their love. You know what that, What happens? You've compromised. You've, 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 you've drank your own vomit. And what happens is you, you're becoming cold-hearted cold and hard-hearted to the fact of what love really does. And love doesn't take. Love gives freely. 
And when you see that, you can distort yourself and move out of peace and make yourself fragmented the more that you continue to go to that place of, of someone tearing you, breaking you, destructing you, destroying you, abusing you, and taking from you. Then you know what? You will never have peace. Peace, when someone says to you, let's just make peace for this, for that person. Let's just make peace for this person. Understand what's being said and what, what you, what you really should do to bring forth the peace. In order to bring forth the peace, you have to have truth. You can never have peace without truth. Some of you need to write that down or tweet it. You can never have peace without truth, which means when you have peace knowing that it's nothing missing, nothing broken, what's being asked of you is, okay, first before we have peace, we have to have truth. And truth sets us free. When something is free, then peace can be present. Amen. I like that. When 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 truth goes before peace is when peace can truly be present. That means that what happens is when the truth of God goes before you in a situation and you say you need to admit your wrongs, you need to realize what you've done, you need to see yourself for what yourself really is. You need to take a good hard, hard look and understand your patterns, your traits of what you've done to so many people in life, how you write off people so easily and so eloquently how you write off people, how you use people, how you abuse people. And you can see the trait of people, whether it was taking from your parents, your grandparents, your neighbors, constantly draining, 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 never accepting, so quick to write off. Folks, when you see that happening, that's a caution sign to say, never ask me to be around that. Never. When you recognize the fact of what that does, then truth should say, when you see everything that you have done by using people and you acknowledge that, oh, we can have amazing peace then. Because that truth will go and say, I can see now what I've done. I can see what I've done. I can see truthfully what I've done. And when you see that, man, peace flows in there like a river and you have wholeness flowing and truth can never be separated. Uh, excuse me. Peace can never be separated from truth ever. That's what it means to say, let's make peace. When you say to me, let's make peace, that means, you know what? You're asking me to take out my sword and let the truth go before you and say, until we acknowledge and see how wrong it's been and the damage you've done and, and, and the abuse you've hurt people and abuse, when you see that and you awaken to that revelation, then we can have peace between one another. But here's the thing you have to understand. You can love someone from a distance and be perfectly fine with it. God would never want everybody in your life to be, you know, holding hands with you, seeing kumbaya. He made people different. He knew people would be different. People respond differently. They see things differently. They react differently. And it doesn't make it all right. It just means that people sometimes can get carried away with their reactions. People can get carried away sometimes with their smart like remarks. People can get carried away with if I've, if I've drained this person financially, it's working for me. I'll just move on to the next person and the next person. And then before long, they develop a paradigm, a habit, an addiction that guess what will continue until the truth is set by someone who says, I want what real peace does. I don't want compromising. I want what real peace does. And real peace says, you need to acknowledge to see the damage you've done. So we can break this habit, break this pattern, and this destructive Jezebelic spirit, per se, or whatever it is that's, that's maybe gotten a hold of that person through hurts or wounds, and then when that does, when that occurs, folks, you're going to see peace like you've never known before happen. But it has to come to a place of I acknowledge my wrongs. I see the damage in which I've done. And when you see that, then you realize then peace can come in like a flood. And then you know what? And some things can be reconciled. And just because something is not reconciled, folks, you can still love. Not everything has to be reconciled. If you see an abuser in your life, a wife doesn't say, you've beat the pulp out of me, you've beat me to no end for years now, but you know what? I forgive. So, therefore, because I forgive, I must return back to you. Folks, forgiveness, never equate forgiveness with returning back. It, they have nothing to do with each other. Sometimes forgiveness might say, I can return back. And then sometimes for, forgiveness says, I can forgive you, but it doesn't mean I have to be in your life all the time. And you know what? That is perfectly normal. It's perfectly fine. And you can love from a distance. And you know what God says? It's okay. 
Because God checks, checks the heart out. And if the heart says, I've really truly forgiven, and I have no, uh, no, nothing against that person, I, I it's not, it's, it, it's nothing personal, I just don't want your abuse anymore. And God knows the heart is clean and cleansed through forgiveness, and it's like, I don't have any wrongdoing for that person at all, then you know what's, what happens? Then you realize, God says, then you know what? Don't worry about it. No, Don't sweat it off. Go on with your merry life, and let me continue to bless you with those that will celebrate you and not tolerate you. And that's what God wants. And so, today, and I know we're approaching Christmas in a week, well, not even less than a week, actually, let's see, less than a week, folks, but I want to tell you something. I know holidays can be hard for people. But can I, you know, one thing, I'm a huge Christmas fan, but I'll close with this. Don't let a day in the Western world, don't let a day called Christmas be so huge to you that you feel that you've built it upon, you know, stilts that on this one particular day, it has to be aligned perfectly for me and that everybody should get along and everybody should do this and everybody should do, you know don't the world has made certain days so big as if it is the biggest of the biggest and the truth be told folks to, to, to ease some of your hearts and minds you know what it's just a day it's just another day with a name on it and how you empower that day is totally left up to you. Now, my prayer for you today, because I love people so much, and, and, and I would say this to you today. If you have somewhere to go to spend time with someone, hey, you know what? Find someone that loves you. Find someone who really genuinely loves you and cares for you. And hang out with that person that day. You don't have to exchange gifts if you don't want to. You don't have to you know, go through the whole Christmas spiel if you don't want to. And if you do, that would be fun. But if you don't, you know what? Find someone that loves you. The Bible says, or oh, you know what you could do? What you could do is find someone who has no one else. And you know what? Empower that person with love. I've realized one thing in my life. When people say, I'm a Christian, I want somebody to say, you know what? You need to say that very carefully. Because when you say you're a Christian, that means that you're, you, you, you've you done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. That means that God really didn't ask you about this and this. What God cares about is, did you feed the poor? Did you take care of those who have no one? It's not about, oh, I gave my donation, I did it in July. Well, good for you. <laughs> it's about every single solitary day. You deny yourself, take up your cross, and you follow him daily. And you, and you decrease that he can increase in you. And you understand the concept for me to hang out with someone who needs me, who has no one. It's not, I did it in July mentality. I did it in March. I paid my dues. No. It's every single day. And every single day, my prayer has always been, you know what, I have no issue with people eating dinner with me. I have no issue with people spending time with me sometimes that I know that, you know, that maybe need someone who's, who doesn't have anyone. That's the blessing of being a Christian. Now, does it make you completely happy? And does it make you feel like, oh man, you know, I'd rather be doing this than, you know, I'd rather be watching a movie really. You know, sometimes you can feel that way. But truth be told, at the end of the day, when you check your heart and you say, I brought life to someone who had no one, who had nothing, nothing at all. At the end of the day, your heart will say, you know, God, I did what was right. I brought joy to someone. And you know what your Heavenly Father says to you? Well done, thy good and faithful, not leader, but servant. A servant is one who serves humanity, who loves the unlovable, as they say, which no one is actually unlovable, and touches the untouchable, which no one is untouchable. That's when you realize that I'm living healthy for what God's called me to do and be in my life. So find someone this season, folks, if you can. Find someone. You know, the old saying, blood is thicker than water, hogwash. That is so ridiculous. You know, Jesus himself even says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Jesus is like, look, you're all my family. You're all my family. You know what? And so you find your family member today. You find your, and who, you know who family is to me? Family is to me those who love me, honor me, celebrate me, who desire to be with me because Jeremy is just that. He's just Jeremy. And you know what? That's family to me. And when you begin to find your family member, quote unquote, you'll begin to know that, you know what? Blood is not thicker than water. But I tell you whose blood is thicker than water is that of Christ. And that blood, when that blood of Christ flows through us, the same blood that flowed in Emmanuel's veins flows in each one of us. 
That's when you can truly say that blood is thicker than any water. Folks, I hope you have an amazing day today, and thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast. My prayer for each one of you is that you find the joy, the joy of the Lord, that you find peace, you find wholeness, you find grace, not just Christmas, but every single day of your life, that you understand how loved you are, that God is such an amazing God and such an amazing Father and such an amazing friend that He wants to wrap His arms around you to say, you know what, I've empowered you to to attract whatever it is in your life you need and want, and all you've got to do is think and believe and I'll cause that desire of your heart to come forth like rivers of living water flowing out of you to bless you with what it is that I want you to have. Even though you want it, I want you to have it even more. Just rely and trust in a God that is more than enough for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in this podcast. Let me encourage you all, make sure you go to our website, identitynetwork.net. When you do, check out our product. I have amazing courses and books. In fact, you know what I would recommend to each one of you? I have an amazing book that is really thick, by the way. It's called Power Attraction. Power Attraction. Folks, let me tell you something. If you truly want to know biblically, can I, do I, or can I really attract things? Do I attract things every day of my life? You bet your bottom. I'm going to prove to you in this book, Power Attraction, how you attract in your life according to what you're thinking. Get the book today, or you can just get the ebook. Download the ebook to your Kindle. Download the ebook to your computer. Power Attraction. And if you end, if you end up ordering the book, if you tell my staff in advance as you're ordering the book, or if you call in the office and say, can Jeremy just autograph it for me? I guarantee you, I'll tell you how much you're loved by the Father and by me in this ministry. I'll autograph it for you and let you know how loved you are. I guarantee you that, alright? So here's the office number, 205-362-7133. That's 205-362-7133. When you call, just say, I heard Jeremy's podcast, administer life to me, and I want to order the Power Attraction book or ebook. All right? Have a blessed day. And folks, when when you hear from me next time, it'll be after Christmas. So today, you get ready for an amazing Christmas season. God bless you. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.